the question to start off with this is like, why are we using organic acids? And, um, you know, I think again, and the, the one of the big components of the Integrative um, Psychiatry Institute is to really bring together this disconnect, right? That the body cannot be separated from the mind when we are treating mental health. And the organic acids test is one tool that is really good at assessing kind of the neck down um, metabolic issues. And so I just love this cartoon because I think it really speaks to the current state of uh, treating mental health and how we are looking to shift that. So organic acids basically give you a functional assessment of multiple different metabolic areas, one being antioxidant status in the body, relative need for B vitamins or B vitamin deficiencies. You get some information on mineral deficiencies and amino acids. It has a section that marks for malabsorption markers. So we're looking at gut dysbiosis. How well is somebody absorbing food that they're eating? as well as is there a component of elevated yeast or bacterial markers that might be contributing to um, the gut brain access and um, interrupting that in the context of mental health. So it's helpful if a person has a combination of gut symptoms and mood symptoms that this could be a really important test to give you more clues on treatment options. Uh, depression or mood disorders that have a high fatigue component is that can be relating a lot to nutritional deficiencies, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction and methylation dysfunction. Um, if there's been a history of chronic fatigue uh, or chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, chronic infections, again, really assessing those bio biochemical pathways can be really helpful. And fibromyalgia would be kind of top areas that you could look at, that if those are going on in addition to mood symptoms, that this test would be a, a good choice. Okay, additional considerations for bacterial dysbiosis. So again, diet cannot be emphasized enough. We're gonna to continue to push high fiber and then the low sugar, low carbohydrates. Um, diets rich in polyphenols, um, right? Anything that gives the bright, beautiful colors are gonna be really helpful in terms of boosting up the more healthy counts, especially the bifido counts of bacteria. Those are found in your fruits veggies, um, your seeds and wine. And remember your fruit skins, your veggies, and your seeds are also an excellent source of fiber. So you kind of get two birds in one stone with those dietary recommendations. Uh, the Mediterranean diet is um, another good option. There was a study done showing that the Mediterranean diet did help increase the healthy counts and the diversity of the um, bacteria in the digestive tract. So Mediterranean diet is good. Always treat the gut first is kind of like our cardinal rule, right? A lot of diseases begin in the gut. We're exploring that gut brain access in terms of how that's affecting mental health. So hone in on the gut. If gut is abnormal, treat it. Is it yeast? Is it bacterial? Is it both? Treat that. Then after that's done, the next phase of treatment plan is to say, what is what is more predominant? Is it more mitochondrial dysfunction? Is it methylation concerns? Is it just across the board deficiencies in nutrients? Then prioritize that. Um, this way the treatment plans do not become overwhelming and you can see exactly what is doing what. You start a gut treatment plan at the same time that you start them on high dose B vitamins and you're doing CoQ10 and you've just given somebody six or seven different supplements targeting spots around the whole um, organic acid test. If they aggravate, what did they aggravate from? We don't know. And so, you know, and if they got better, what did they get better from? We don't know. And we don't want somebody having to take this many things forever. Um, so I really recommend that, you know, a good tip for implementing this is to go section by section and just kind of move through this. 